Why, oh why, did I come to LA? Why did I stay here? Why am I still here? I think I ask me myself these questions somewhat regularly. I think about what has transpired since I got here, you know, having been homeless and sticking around for two and a half years instead of trying to go somewhere else. Part of it was familiarity. It was just, it was, I, you know, I think it really boils down to just having been here and having had a good experience while I was here for like a week, even though it was kind of a shitty week. You know, I, I got here and the girl that I met in Flagstaff, who, you know, I, obviously I was immediately attracted to, she splits off, you know, she, it, it felt like she had a better connection with my friend from West Hollywood. And, you know, he let me stay over his place. That was great. And he was helping me get to and from places, which was great. And, you know, I never really thought about what I was doing there. I just wanted to be there while I was, while I was here. It was like, it just felt like that was where I belonged at the time. I mean, maybe that's just four years of having been here, sort of retconning my my old thoughts. I don't know. But looking back on it, it's like, it, it felt better than where I came from. Now, I'll be honest. Miami was better overall. Miami felt like it was where I literally belonged, especially in that water. I don't know. I mean, maybe it was because that was too much fantasy. I'm not sure. Uh, this definitely, LA has this gravity to it. It has this appeal, this attraction for me. And I don't, I don't know what it is. Or maybe I do, and I'm not willing to admit it. There is one thing that I haven't really been willing to admit. And... I think it's mostly just to myself more than anything else, but I think one of the reasons I stayed, because this happened all the time in my mind. It happened even when I lived in Texas. This has been happening for as long as I can remember. I have always, always wanted to make it big. I've wanted to be discovered, even though I had nothing worth discovering. And for all intents and purposes, I still have nothing worth discovering. I am run of the mill. As far as I'm aware, based on the things that I understand, I am the average Joe Blow. Now, does that mean that the average Joe Blow can't make it big? Not really. I mean, there's a lot of really, really super talented people that aren't making it big. For whatever reason, whether it's because of the life choices they've made or because they don't have certain like business acumen or what have you. I don't feel that I have the proper business acumen. I hate dealing with the business side of things. I don't care about it. I care so little about it. I hate it. You know, it, it's like the video that I just watched earlier from this one comedian. It's British. I can't remember his name. Talking about the couldn't care less. When you're sitting at zero, the only way you can care less is if you go negative, and that's just simply a, another strong emotion like love or hate. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's just that I hate it so much. For whatever reason, maybe it's history-oriented. You know, my mother is an accountant, bookkeeper, whatever. You know, and all that kind of shit was pushed down onto me. It was, it was a pressure that was applied to me and, and you know, I'm 34 now. I, that shouldn't be a thing that I worry about or think about or whatever, but it is, it is. And the thing is, is that, you know, I stayed, I stayed for one survival. You know, I came to LA, I know I came to LA because the weather I thought was pleasant. I didn't know about their homeless service. I didn't know it was an option. I mean, fuck. I got lucky. I got lucky. Dude saw me. He let me stay over at his place for a couple of nights. And he kicked me out because once I got food stamps, 
I guess he thought I was ungrateful and I was just trying. I was on like survival mode at that point because I was so afraid that everything was just going to go falling to pieces. And then it fucking did anyway, so it doesn't matter. But yet, you know, I persevered. I got out of it. it took me a forever. I made friends along the way, some of whom I haven't talked to in a while for various reasons. But, you know, some of them I will sit down and I'll talk to them for two, three, four hours, whatever. You know, and it it's all been a strange journey. But to go back to what I was saying, there's been one thing, and I think I already mentioned it. I have wanted to be discovered despite not feeling like I have anything worthy of discovering. And I still want that. I don't know why. I, maybe it's just because I'm an attention whore and I want the attention. And even when people tell me good things, I don't believe them because I don't have the confidence. And so I need to keep hearing those things. For all I know, I will become something big only because my fucking ego is so fragile. Because inevitably, I end up working so hard, doing all the right things, getting all the right compliments, and still telling people they're full of shit. And still trying to improve myself because I still don't live up to this measurement in my brain. I, I see so many things that I would love to do that I don't feel like I could because I don't have the skill. And the... the adventures that I've taken, the the attempts at doing these things, I have not done well. I hate, I hate painting. I don't hate painting. I hated the process of painting. I hated, I hated how I couldn't see what was needed to be seen. I, I still feel like that right now, right fucking now. Later today, I have a class, my acting to be class. And I still, I still feel that I can't see what is needed of me. I can see what I feel like I need, but I feel like I can't do it right. And that's how I felt about everything in this world. I have always felt like I'm retarded. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Maybe it is the other side. Maybe I'm not at all retarded. Maybe, because of how I think, I'm just different enough. And I'm not trying to make myself special. I, I don't think I'm special. I think I'm shit. But maybe I think just differently enough that I have to work outside the expectations, that I need to do the wrong things. It reminds me of the 40-year-old virgin. You know, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. Well, look where feeling right got you. Maybe you need to try a little wrong. That, that has stuck in my head for years now. It, it doesn't come out very much, but... I just don't know what the wrong is because everything feels wrong, all of it. But interestingly enough, I feel better when I think of something that's wrong and I run with it. I feel better. And who the hell cares? Really? You know, I understand there's some, maybe some mild sociopathy in there because I'm like, well, fuck society. But, okay, for instance, I'm sitting here recording this, and when I scroll out, I've got like 10 different recording entries. And what are they? They're readings from a book that we have to read for this acting class. Because if I sat down and read that book, I will kill myself. I cannot be... My focus does not hold in this book. I cannot maintain the attention I need. But reading it out loud, 6 or 12 or 15 minutes at a time, is doable. 
and then I can come back to it and I can listen to it and I can follow along in the book and highlight shit and hopefully process whatever I'm process and no I'm not going to be doing it in the time frame that my instructor wants me to do it I'm already like four assignments late but I'm going to turn them in anyway and I'm even going to give him links to the audio I'm not going to upload it to SoundCloud I'm just going to upload it to Google Drive and then I'm going to give him the links to them and be like look here's the proof of me reading these out loud if you need anything but it's better late than never in this case and I think that the teaching needs to change because it's an acting class an acting class shouldn't be mostly reading outside of class it's impractical it's dumb it's dumb and for whatever reason I am gravitating towards all this there have been moments there have been these moments, and I mentioned one once with this Romeo and Juliet production, the previous attempt, where I almost quit. It was close to the end. We were like a week and a half away. It was right before Thanksgiving, and I just got kicked out of the room because of stupid bullshit. Because my instructor wanted to talk, got a girl talk with the girls that were there. And I felt shunned i felt outcast i felt like that little boy that felt like that most of my life like i didn't fit in that i didn't do something wrong it's just that nobody likes me and that's how it made me feel i felt embarrassed i felt like i was an outcast like i was worthless you know, all of these old stupid things coming back. And I flipped a coin and I was saying to myself, like, if it's heads, I'll stay, tails, I'll go, something like that. And it landed on the one where I was going to go. But for some fucking reason, and I still don't know, I said out loud to myself, I don't want to go. What the fuck? I made a choice beforehand and yet I still somehow decided to stay. And even through all the bullshit this semester, I could have quit a week into it. Instead of dropping one of my classes, I could have dropped the play. Sure, it would have made the play a little bit more difficult because I'm a bigger character. But I'm sure she could have found somebody who was better at memorization than me. She may not have found somebody who's as good at articulating what I'm trying to say. I don't know. All I do know is that that is my strong suit. In this role, I seem to understand what I'm saying because the people that I know who enjoy Shakespeare are telling me that. I don't know what I'm going to get out of this. I don't know what I'm going to get out of this $150 microphone this hundred dollar interface and I'm not trying to throw dollar signs around and be like I'm special no these are investments into something and I don't know what it is I don't know what's gonna happen in my life you know it, it, it's so weird I am frightened for the future yet at the same time there's a certain level of calm and those things combined actually causes me a great form of anxiety because I sh I've never felt like that before. I've never had this weird sense of everything's going to be all right, but at the same time, it's not. You know, there is an end point, and that end point is the amount of money in my bank account right now. When that goes away, I'm fucked. So I have to figure out when it's going to go away. When is it going to disappear? So in other words, am I going to stay in L.A.? There's some things about L.A. that I want to leave for. It's too dry out here. I could go to the beach. That would probably make life easier. I don't know. You know, I hear that Long Beach is a good place for uh, a degree in theater arts. 
Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. I fucking don't know. You know, it's it, it's so weird. Like, I'm just going through the motions. That's what I've been doing since I got here. And, and maybe that's the reason why I'm still here. Because throughout all of the just craziness, all of the uncertainty, all of the absurdity and the, the bullshit... I have decided to continue going through the motions because something in me says something good's coming from it. And I don't know what it is. And I guess I'll just keep going until I either A, find out what it is, or find out nothing good comes from it. You know, maybe this voice acting thing will work, maybe it won't. I don't know. But I want to keep working at it. I'm. I'm almost getting every single day working on my vocal exercises, especially the, the, well, only the tongue twisters. There are other things I'm sure I could do to improve the quality of my voice. I don't know how they will work if I actually get into a performance situation. But I got, you know, those nine rolls or whatever it is in that Final Fantasy game and that's almost done. It's all so fucked. I, I don't even know what word to use. Fuck, I don't even know how to talk about certain things, right? Like, in this class, and in writing, which is interesting, action verbs are very, very important. You don't ask somebody, you interrogate them, or you do something else, but I don't know what the word is. And that's the funny thing, I don't know what the word is until I use it. And even then, I don't always use it because I don't use action words because for me, the way that I think of them, I feel like they're unnecessary words to convey emotion. They're sensationalized. But this is why it all works. Asking somebody something and interrogating them, well, the interrogation... It gives you more information about it, yes. But it's also sensationalized. I can't write sensationalized shit. I don't know how to positively or negatively affect people's emotions. I do it on my own by accident. I know how to make people uncomfortable. That's easy. But I don't know how to make them feel good or feel bad or feel really anything. There are a few people in my life that get me, and I want to talk to them more, but I, I don't know if it's a block, if it's a brain thing, if it needs conditioning, or if I just need to carry a fucking book with me all the time. And the worst part is, the worst fucking part is that the words are in there. They exist. And I have used them in proper context. And yet, like we, when being asked to define a word, I draw a blank. You know, there's a guy in one of, in two of my classes, in fact. There's a guy in two of my classes this semester. And whenever he answers a question, it's as if he's reading it out of a dictionary. But he's got just the right conversational tone that it doesn't actually sound like he's reading. Like, this is how he thinks. This is how he responds. I can only fucking wish that I could do something like that. Because then I would be able to speak clearly to people. To be able to say the things that I'm thinking. Because his answers are almost exactly how I write my emails and letters and texts. Because I have time to process what I'm saying, to reword it. Yet, when I talk, you know, if, if I can just go on, and like I have been here for a little bit, if I could just go on for my own, no big deal. Awesome, great. You know, occasionally the words, 
the action verbs come out. Sometimes they don't. And, you know, maybe that's what makes me an interesting talker. I don't know. People seem to like my stories. All right, then. Awesome. You know, maybe they like to hear about my struggles because they're dealing with the same shit. Or they want to hear about my struggles and realize, oh, my God, this guy's so fucking lame. I can't even believe he's doing it. I got worse this, that, or whatever. I don't know. It's interesting that the play that I just read and did a monologue from is called Doubt. Deals with a pastor who might be gay, might be a pedophile, probably gay though, but even then it isn't necessarily gay. And the very, the, Im, the opening to the play is him having a sermon about the concept of doubt and how doubt, uncertainty, can be a bond. And, and I guess the reason I'm bringing it up is because this is, I, I think that's the nature of this meandering thought is that I am so constantly stricken with uncertainty at times there are forms of uncertainty that I'm okay with I don't know if aliens exist cool I think they do just because it's a, it seems more likely but I don't know but I'm not nervous about that because it doesn't affect me as an individual you know, but spending all this time in Romeo and Juliet, and for what? To what end? I'm not going to get any more plays this semester. I can't fucking afford the time. Because what do I want to do? I want to come back home and I want to do more podcasts. I want to do my vocal exercises. I want to record lines and audition for audio parts. I want to stream me reading stories. And why? Because... There seems to be a demand for my voice. Which is in stark contrast to that of my perceptions in the past. I, I was of the, I, the notion that nobody wanted to hear what I had to say. Nobody cared. Maybe it was just the crowd I was around. I don't know. You know, when I'm told that dude's playing... Grand Theft Auto and listening to my podcast, that's flattering to me. That's awesome. I don't know why. But fuck it, I'll just keep doing it because that's awesome. Because how many more people will? I don't know. I don't know. 